The job action changes have been fully revealed for Endwalker, and I'm going to specifically in this video be going over the Sage skill changes from the Media Tour info that we had, going into this brand new Endwalker info. And while the majority, like the incredible majority, is the same, some of them are actually quite different so I do actually think that this is a video worth making even though it's like almost four o'clock in the morning. <laughs> I do want to say though that this is a faster video since I am literally up for a work meeting in like four hours but as always if this video helps you I'd super appreciate if you dropped a bootylicious sage on that like button and cat daddy that subscribe button. The first change was the dosis potency was actually not nerfed. I'm not gonna lie, I was a little surprised to see that 330 potency is still there. I know, I said that this was a change video, but relative to other healers, it's just like we're looking at even the white mage, we're looking at the scholar, we're looking at the ast. Wow, the sage hits way harder with doses than I expected. The sage's basic spamble is still the highest of all the healers going to end marker. One thing that actually really excites me, like really really excites me about the sage is Eucrasia is now instant cast, meaning that now the sage can fully deploy berries well on the move, which to be quite honest, Honest with everyone here is a great quality of life change for sure. Both Eucrasia and Eucrasian Diagnosis or Eucrasian Prognosis are now all fully mobile, which is a pretty huge perk over the Scholar if I'm to be quite honest. Being able to instantly on the move get those shields ready, get them out on targets just a little bit before Tank Buster can really help. Soteria now has a 50% boost which is half of the original doubling that it used to do, but Soteria lasts 15 seconds which now means that you can stuff a total of 6 damaging abilities into there. So if I'm being super honest, Soteria is still going to be a very awesome skill to pop. Specifically, we're looking at 170 baseline multiplied by 1.5 is going to be 255 potency of healing per cardio proc. Since this is a very easy fire and forget skill, it doesn't have the whole build up like the Fey Gauge does for the Scholar, this is actually going to be really easy to use. Zoe has had its power being reduced by half, but now we will see Numa buffs to its healing from 400 to 600, so Zoe Numa is still going to be actually getting buffed regardless of this, which I think this combo is going to be absolutely uh, devastating, sickening, disgusting, I don't know, pick which word you want, it's gonna be nuts. But on the note of Numa, this skill was nerfed itself, where its mitigation component has now been placed elsewhere. We're gonna get into that in a little bit, but that's actually not a bad thing. Don't worry, the Sage still has that, but somewhere else. But one thing that did bother me about Numa was that it is undeniably, absolutely undeniably a sharp, fierce, brutal recovery tool. That is a lot of healing in a huge range. With Zoe, we're looking at a massive 900 potency burst of healing. So now my question that I'm going to propose to everyone that is going to make everyone feel better about why the mitigation was removed from here is why would I want to waste that kind of 900 potency burst healing before damage comes into the party? The truth is, I wouldn't want to waste it like that. I would see that, <laughs> I guess as I just said, like a waste. So Numa having that moved elsewhere in the kit is actually very welcome to me. This is actually a quality of life improvement and this really just in my mind speaks to how the sage breaks down a skill into multiple skills that helps really the sage have um how to say it uh different choices different options now let me explain where the 10 percent aoe mitigation went and yes it's still 20 seconds duration and so holos was previously literally fey blessing as we know it today it was like a 300 potency burst of healing which is okay but is that gameplay changing it's nice for a pick me up, but at the same point, at the end of the day, it wasn't a make or break for me. It was helpful, but not crazy. But now it has been changed into being a 120 second cooldown with a burst heal that applies that 10% mitigation. And like, like I was just saying is when I was talking about the Sage's kit in prior videos, I emphasized that it has a lot of the aspects of choice to it, and I'm happy that this is more of a clear choice. Let me explain why that isn't a nerf. Seriously, I'm thinking like, a lot of people are going to see this initially and be like, oh my god, it's, it's such a huge nerf. Um, I've already actually heard a little bit of rattling on that on like social media. But um, seriously, I'm feeling like this all changed together. All of these little reworks here. Fizz's 2 is on a 60 second cooldown timer now and has a 10% healing amplification to healing. Healing actions. Healing actions. And that's very important because that's not healing magic. This means that you and your co-healer get so, so, so much more value. Just to be clear, healing actions includes like any healing actions. So that includes off GCDs, that includes on GCDs. Like this is just going to be a very, very powerful effect. And to be honest, Fizz's 2 is going to be just to be quite 
Quaplan with everyone a disgustingly broken skill. <laughs> that kind of healing amp is something that I talk to ultimate raiders like my like some of my closest friends that I'm raiding with that have the privilege to raid with in Endwalker are like talking about like oh my god like Asylum has the healing amp and it does all this and this and this and like a plan around it. It's like this is now on demand which we can give as the co-healer to someone like a white major and asked and just see their heals just go through the ceiling. On 60 second cooldown timer with its own hot. This is uh, kind of nuts. What unfortunately this did come at the cost of though is that Fizzes 2 is now an upgrade to Fizzes rather than an independent skill. But because we just talked about that Amper effect and just how insanely ridiculous that is, I mean, yeah, I'm, I'm really not crying over it. I mean, maybe I should, maybe I should be more sad, but I still see the synergy and I'm excited for it. Now let's talk about Haima and Panheima. Ham and pineapple. <laughs> Cause whoa. I mean, if it wasn't like 4 o'clock a.m. right now, I would probably be like way more excited and energetic about it than like I'm coming across probably in the recording. But, but like these were super buffed, like a lot. Haima is now a 300 potency barrier that is replaced by a 300 potency barrier when it breaks up to five times in a row. That is 300 multiplied by six is 1,800 potency of barriers to a single target. That is... <laughs> really really good remember that you can proc the trickle heal of cardia underneath and so this is not risking overhealing it is just it's just honestly beautiful this is actually really strong really really strong i mean actually maybe i'll, I'll actually talk about panheima next before i talk about the other what i was gonna say now panheima is a 200 multiplied by six is 1200 potency of barriers in an area of effect <laughs> Um, really, I was happy with it at 150 potency. I could still see things being really, really strong, but this is just <laughs> beyond words. So now let's talk about why I'm not mad at all about the 30 seconds duration to 15 seconds duration for ham and pineapple, because that's really... how to say it? I, when I use a cooldown, I want all of its effects to really be used very close in proximity to, uh, or temporal proximity, to when I fired off the skill. And if the barriers aren't spent, it's just a tighter interval from precast to bursting back the party with leftover shields. I see that as a quality of life improvement. 30 seconds into the future, that's too far for me to really benefit from. Yes, I could try and plan around it, but you know what? I can see 15 seconds ahead into the future of a fight better than I can 30 seconds. I don't think that that's controversial to say, but I'm gonna stick by what I'm saying, that's how I feel. I think that this is actually a buff to the skill, the duration, quote unquote nerf. Anyhow, I really need to get this video edited out and to bed. <laughs> I have a meeting in like four hours and I am so, so dead. <laughs> I am actually so excited for the Sage. You know what, just seeing these changes, seeing all this really kind of gives me to the conviction that I made the right decision with choosing, hey, Sage is going to be my first job, which I'm going to try and main into Endwalker. I literally just logged out, literally right before these notes came in Lisa Lamasa, right at the location. I have my augmented Scavian, I have my Poetics ready for the Sage weapon. Um, everything is ready. And you know what, seeing this just gives me the conviction that, you know what, this is going to be an absolute freaking blast for me to play. This hits all the buttons. And these changes actually orient the Sage more into a direction where I feel like meaningful choice is going to be really rewarded. I really like that I can just bring so much to the party, like amplifying my co-healer's healing on a 60 second interval. Like, that's amazing. Anyhow, that does it for this video. Take care, everyone, and let me know what do you think about these changes. Anyhow, Take care, everyone, and hope to see you soon. Really soon. I hope that I can get a video out in the morning. We'll see.